excuse me, I think that was Mark, wasn't it? Yes, Mark, when Jesus was baptized. But he also gave us a command about baptism, and that's in Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 15. After he had died on the cross and then he rose again for 40 days, he was seen with many different disciples and people in the community, and at the end, he gave them all a command. And he said in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I love that it says all creation. All right, this is totally not my sermon, but I have to tell you this. I stand by that when I have dogs and animals because it says all creation. So what I've done with all of my pets is I've told them all about Jesus and told them that the Bible says to preach the gospel to all creation, and if they want to go to heaven when they die, so they I will be up there waiting for me to give me a kiss. And all my dogs give me a kiss, so they've all accepted Jesus. And so if you have puppies at home, don't be afraid. It says to preach to all creation. And I know for my children, it gives them peace in their heart to know that we've told all the puppies about Jesus. So. I'm just saying that's what the Bible says here, right? It says, he said to them, go into all the world and to preach to all the gospel to all creation. Whomever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So tonight we're going to do what this word says to do. I have over many years preached the gospel to all of you and you've heard the message and you've signed up to be baptized. So tonight we're going to be um, bringing some of the different ones up to be baptized. And I wanted to also read how we don't only see this in the New Testament, but we actually, when we've taken the time to preach through all of this, we've shown the pictures of the Jewish people and the water baptisms areas that they had. And see, baptism was a big thing in their culture, and they would go down and they would dip in the water because when they came back up, they would be clean. And so the Jewish people understood this. And we see one of the prophets in Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 25, say, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all impurities and from all of your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to carefully keep my laws. So the prophets knew that as Jesus came, that when they would continue to baptize, and, and we see in many different places in the Bible, in this case was the sprinkling, in other cases it was a full immersion, that the point of it was to cleanse us, to have a new heart, and to have God's Spirit come in us. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um, a few sprinkle baptisms, and then we're going to move on to some more of the full immersion, and I'll show you some more scriptures where that is. And so I'm going to ask Pastor Nicole to come up and assist me as we are able to do some of these baptisms. And thankfully, because Clay and his mother Karen have gone to Israel, they were able to get us some water out of the River Jordan, and so we have some of that here. So I'm going to add this water that has been blessed, and thankfully out of the same water source as where Jesus was baptized, we're going to add that to our baptismal water. I'm going to have Pastor Nicole hold this. And the first person we're going to invite up here is Cassandra. And her wonderful friend Ashley is going to come stand and be witness with her. And I just have a few questions for you. And they're yes or no answers, so they're pretty, pretty simple here. Do you believe there is a God in heaven that created heaven and earth? And do you believe there is a Father God who loves you yes. and sent Jesus down to save you and release the Holy Spirit to fill you? Yes. And do you receive Jesus as your Savior? Yes. Now, you know you'll still make mistakes and you may sin, but you get to go to heaven because of your faith in Jesus alone and not by your works, right? Right. Pastor Nicole, let's bring the water over here. Cassandra, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You are a child of God. Holy Spirit, fill her. Be with her and watch over her and all that she does. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Woohoo! And 
Cassandra, I have this for you. Yes. There you go. Normally they're pretty, pretty wet there, so. Yes, you're welcome. Now we have a little one that will be baptized, and, and we see in the book of Acts as the gospel would go out, that entire households would be baptized. And so this household has decided they want their entire household to be baptized, and that includes little Camilla, so come on up, and she can feel free to bring up any family members that would like to stand and witness, and many of them, I'm sure, will be watching over her life as she continues and, and knows about the Lord. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, isn't she gorgeous? I mean, look at this. You are ready. So I have a question for Mama. As the parent of this child, do you promise to do your best in raising her as a Christian and reminding her that God loves her so very much? All right. All right. Well, she might not like this part, but we're going to make sure she gets baptized here. Camilla, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Holy Spirit. You are now a child of the Most High God. Amen. Father God, I ask you to bless her, to watch over her and all that she does. Be with her. In Jesus' name, may your angels be around about her. Keep her safe, healthy, and strong in all that she does. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Here you go, Mom. Grandma, here you go. Got her certificate. Thank you. Oh, I love it. Oh, God is so very good. We see in Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 26, it says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself in Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. When we accept Christ and we are baptized, make that decision, we become children of the Most High God. And so I'm just so proud of all of those that have made this decision. And, and one of the young men here at church had heard about baptism and he wanted to be baptized, and that's Carson. Come on down and bring your papa with you. We're going to take that water that was in the River Jordan. We're going to add that here to our baptismal tank. And we're going to have you come on in. Now you have to tell us you're the first one, so I figure you'll be honest, because he's going to be brutally honest, if the water is cold or warm. Warm, yay, we did good. You can tell Dr. Todd thank you because he came down yesterday and put the heater in there. So what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you step inside. You're going to go kind of right in the middle. And you can sit on your bottom. You're going to be kind of down in there. All right. Now, if Jesus did this in a cold river, you can do it in this warm tub, right? So I have a question for you. Do you believe there is a God in heaven who created the heavens and the earth? And do you believe there is a Father God who loves you and sent Jesus down to save you and release the Holy Spirit to fill you? Do you receive Jesus as your Savior, knowing that you might make mistakes and you might sin, but you get to go to heaven when you die because of what Jesus did? And do you want to be baptized? All right. Mom, I'm going to have you say the words. Just put your head on his forehead. We're going to just dunk you really quick, okay? product that they use in the dental offices so it's safe if it gets in your face and it is 
um, certified to kill the COVID bug or anything that might be there. So if you see me dunking in a little water, it's, it's not water, it's a disinfectant. But I'm just going to mix that all up in between each person. And next up we have is James Clayfer. And for those of you who might not know, he is not only a member here at the church, but he is the president of our board, and we're just so thankful that he is here. And he said, look at all your family came right up. I didn't even have to ask him to come up. He's got lots of brothers and sisters. Some of them might be from a different mother, but right? <laughs> yes. So I'm going to have you scoot forward just a little bit. God in heaven. Yes. Do you believe that this Father loves you? Yes. And that He sent Jesus to save you? Yes. And that He wants the Holy Spirit to fill you? Yes. And do you receive Jesus as your Savior? I do. You know what? You might make mistakes, Jim. You might sin, but you get to go to heaven because your faith is in Christ alone. Amen? Let's just pray for Jim. Oh, Father God, we just ask you to bless him, and to watch over him, to keep your angels around about him, to be with him wherever he may go. Remind him at all times that he is not alone, that he is loved, not only by you, but by us. We ask you to watch over him in Jesus' name, and may the Holy Spirit fill him as we baptize him. In Jesus' name we pray. All right, Jim, you might want to plug your nose. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we baptize you. Thank you, Father God, for watching over Jim and his entire family, to, for being with him and his children. We ask you, Father God, to fill his home with your peace. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Jesse, I'm going to give you this. Because my hands keep getting wet, and I know if I keep touching these, that thank you. Maybe you just put it in the seat next to me there. All right. All right, next, we have another brother. We have Michael. Come on down. We're so glad that you are here. He has been a church member since the beginning. He's an usher here. Oh, yep, don't forget my disinfectant. All right. There we go. Although we do have some pine needles that have seemed to work their way up. We keep this out back. And, and uh, go ahead, step inside right in the middle. One of the kids had asked earlier, are you going to clean that before we get in there? Because there's some leaves. <laughs> we tried our best to get it all clean. Go ahead and sit. There you go. might want to put your feet in front of you unless you're more flexible than I realize but Michael I have a few questions for you do you believe there's a God in the heavens and do you believe that this father loves you and that he sent Jesus and wants the Holy Spirit to fill you yes. do you receive him as your Savior knowing you might make mistakes but that you're gonna to go to heaven when you die yes. would you like to be baptized yes. feel free to Plug your nose and put your hands across your chest here. And we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Feel like a new creation? Amen. There you go. Thank you so much. has my stack of cards here, and I think we've baptized everyone that is here today, unless we have Autumn here. I don't think we do. Or Lisa, no? So Chris and them are not able to make it. All right. So feel free to have a seat, everyone. I'm so glad that you've been here to lead us in worship. I'm going to 
go here to the book of Acts and look at Acts chapter 19. There is, and you're not going to have the scripture for this, but I wanted to read to you. So Paul and Silas uh, were arrested for, for speak, speaking the gospel. And, and um, it says in Acts chapter 16, verse 16, Once when we were going to a place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. Now, we know that there is a spiritual world, right? And just like there is God the Father and Holy Spirit, there is also demonic spirits. And in the spirit realm, they might see something going on that you haven't yet heard about. So with fortune telling, right, they might say, Oh, I can see you're about to get a, a raise at work. Well, because the demonic spirits are everywhere, and they might have heard from somebody, oh, I'm going to give this person's really good hard work, or I'm going to give them a raise. And so by doing this, by going and using demonic spirits to hear about things, um, we feel excited because we're hearing about the future. But we know as Christians that God wants us to rely on the Holy Spirit. So some of the gifts that the Holy Spirit prophets and pastors have is what's called like the gift of discernment. So like today is a great example. My husband is a um, dentist here in town and a lot of times his phone will ring and it'll be people um, that maybe have a problem. And what he usually does is if he doesn't recognize the number, he won't answer and he'll go to his voicemail. And then once he hears the name of the patient, he's able to pull up their file and understand, see what's going on in their dental health before he calls them back. So that way as he's talking to them, he kind of knows what's going on. Well, today the phone rang and it was, wasn't a number he recognized, wasn't a person he recognized, but I saw the area code and I just had this feeling in my heart and I said, you better answer it, I think it has something to do with your dad. Well, he answered it and sure enough, it was his dad's neighbor. Now, we never met this man, we don't know his name, we didn't know his number, so why is that? Is that fortune telling, right? Is that demonic? No, because I'm not using demonic spirits and trying to, you know, make money off of knowing these things. It's the Holy Spirit in me. And so what we see here was something that was not holy. She was being a fortune teller and she was making money and she was not using God's spirit. She was using demonic spirits, okay? So she is a fortune teller, and she's got demonic spirits, so she can kind of look around and see what's going on. And so when she's around these guys, she knows that they are holy men, and she begins to speak this out. It says in verse 17, she followed Paul and the rest of us, shouting, these men are the servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Now, when they, she first did this, they thought, well, she's speaking the truth. I mean, she's got the spirit. She can kind of see what we're doing. And she keeps doing this. However, this is how demonic spirits sometimes work, isn't it? They don't do it to be a blessing to you. They're doing it to be annoying. It's kind of like when you're being tempted and a demonic spirit is tempting you to do the wrong thing. It doesn't stop the first time, does it? It keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. So... She continued this. She kept this up for many days, and finally Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the demonic spirit left her. I love how it had to be until he was annoyed before he'd finally do something. Is anybody else like that, right? Like you have some, a problem at home, and Oh, I need to do the dishes. Eh, I'm not going to do them right now. But then after a day or two, the smell or the pile of them, or you go to get a clean cup and there is none, you're so annoyed that you're like, all right, I've got to do what I need to do. See, sometimes we've got something demonic in our life, and we wait until it's annoying us before we finally act on it. But when he did this, it says the owners realized that now they couldn't make money off of this young woman anymore. So they seized Paul and Silas, and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews, and they are throwing our city into an uproar. 
by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept or practice. So this was a Roman city who used demonic spirits to do all kinds of different things. These Jewish men who are Christians and full of the Holy Spirit used the power in the name of Jesus, just like I was telling you before you can call in the name of Jesus, and they've cast out this demon that was in this woman. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, for all you young people, that means beat really bad, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he had received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Okay, so you have two Christian men in the city whom have cast out a de demon out of a woman just by using the name of Jesus, and now they've been beaten, and they've been put in a jail cell with stocks on their feet so they can't even move around, they can't do anything. They're probably hungry. I'm just going to give you that because normally you had to have people bring you, family members of that town bring you food. They weren't fed, and they're probably visitors in this town. So they're thrown into the prison. They're hungry. They've been beaten, all for using the name of Jesus. And at about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Can you imagine that? What a day, right? You go to work and someone's being really annoying and you finally say, okay, I'm going to handle this. And you say, in the name of Jesus, demonic spirit, stop hassling this woman. And you're beaten, you're put in stocks, you're in the middle of a prison, and you decide, I'm going to pray. I'm going to sing songs. I'm going to worship God. Now, I tell you, most of us would be doing that. Most of us would be calling our lawyer. I'd be demanding an extra pillow. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be like, I need another pillow. Who do I call for another pillow, right? I'd be like, not happy. I'd be like, where is my dinner? Now I'm getting hangry, right? And instead, these guys, we just have to pray. It's God who delivers us. Now, this is a lesson. I mean, I'm going to get to the part where we get to the baptism part, but for a minute, let's just think about this. How many times do we, first of all, don't even deal with what's annoying us? Or we deal with it with our own flesh. Well, I'm going to just do this. Or if I call this person, or if I do this, rather than just say, you know, in the name of Jesus, spirit that's hassling her, go. I mean, I, I've tried it both ways. I had, I've had people in my life where I'm like, Lord, ah, you got to deal with this person. you got to deal with this person. you got to deal with this person. All of a sudden, it's like, Lord, in the name of Jesus, whatever demon is influencing this person and making the situation miserable, I'm going to tell the demon to go in the name of Jesus. That's what they did. They didn't tell this woman to leave him alone. They told the demon to leave the woman alone. And then when we find ourselves super miserable, are we taking the time to pray? Are we taking the time to worship? So about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. I love that, right? When we decide to worship and pray, guess what God does? Other people see it. They see us that the complaining has stopped. They see what has changed. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. Now, our culture today, we don't get that, right? If a prisoner <laughs> escapes the jails here in town, the prison guards don't want to kill themselves because they're not going to be held liable. You know, we'll just look at the cameras and see what happened. But back then, if you were a prison guard and you let somebody escape, whatever their punishment was going to be gets done to you. So this prisoner is like, okay, three of those guys were going to be killed, but five of them were going to be beat. So I'm going to be beat five times, then killed. And that's, that's what would happen to these prison guards. And so he's like, I want a clean death. If I'm going to go out, I'm just going to just kill myself and be done. And now the prisoners, they all know this. So Paul shouts and he says, don't harm yourself. We are all here. And then the jailer called for the light, lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, you might be wondering, why in the world does a jailer want to be saved simply because everybody stayed in their jail cells? 
because he thought they had been praying, they have been worshiping, and all these guys have heard it. And if this God is so powerful to make all these men face the crimes that they were going to be go before, because now they've got this salvation, they know where they're going to go when they die, I want that for myself as well. So he says to them, what must I do to be saved? And that's the question for all of us. What must I do to be saved? Not just so I go to heaven when I die, but I have that much peace while I'm living. Prisoners that were at their end of their life, about to be tortured, about to be killed, are now all at peace and waiting because they have heard the gospel message from Paul and Silas while they were there. And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all of the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all of his household were baptized. I love the fact that he says that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. So people who maybe didn't have a chance to be baptized before they die. If they believed, you know, we believe that they're still going to go to heaven because they've called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we go through the act of public baptism to show that I am now cleansed, I am now washed, I have gone down into the waters, or I've had the water sprinkled upon me, and I've been made clean because of the fact that what Jesus did, and I believe in him, and so his entire household was, was cleansed, was baptized. And it says, The jailer brought them to his house and set a meal before them, and he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to come into your presence and to make a decision publicly to announce to the world that I am saved. I do believe in the name of Jesus. And these waters, even though they might be symbolic, they cleansed me. And so when Satan tries to torment me or, or, or try to tempt me to do these different things, all I have to do is call in the name of Jesus and tell any demonic spirit that might be bothering me to go. And so, Father God, we ask you to bless those that have witnessed the public baptisms tonight. For those that were baptized, we believe that today is a new day, that the old has passed and the new is here, and that they are a new creation in Christ. We thank you, Father God, that your Holy Spirit has fallen upon them. In the stillness of their days and nights to come, may your voice be louder in their head than anything else. Whisper to them and bring comfort to them and bring your blessings upon their lives. We ask you to bless them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, I just want to put this out there in case anybody really wanted to be baptized that didn't let us know ahead of time. Is there anybody here that would like to be baptized before we go? All right. Most of you have already been or um, have been dedicated and done that already. Just wanted to put that out there in case anybody wanted to. But we are done with our service tonight. I hope you are blessed. I hope you are doing well. We do have our blessing shop open downstairs to the left. And we'll be here next Sunday at 6 p.m. And then starting in September, we will have our services at 10 a.m. I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless.